Hello, and welcome to this week's episode of the Edges and Sledges Cricket Podcast. I'm your host, Ashwin. I'm joined by DJ. DJ, how you doing, man? We're, we're on a new software platform, so hopefully everything works okay uh, on the YouTube live stream and for the podcast. Hopefully, if you're listening, this is all good. But how are you doing? I'm really well, man. The IPL has kicked off. Uh, there have already been, what, five games that have been played? So, it, uh, yeah, it's games coming thick and fast. Very exciting. Fantasy cricket season is back as well. So, yeah. Awesome. I'm missing Varun. I don't know where he is, but... Uh, he, I'm, I think, is sure. celebrating at the bars, if I'm not mistaken, because the IPL opening weekend has kicked off. If For those of you who listened to our Ultimate IPL preview, he made a prediction. He got a lot of hate. And, of course, we're only one match into a very, very, very long tournament. So it's far too early to say anything. But, gosh, it seems like a lot of the haters that he had, that uh, the naysayers to Varun, uh, have been proven wrong. But we will jump right into that. And if you don't know what I'm talking about, hey, go back and listen to the episode and read some of the comments. And read the comments. Let me start by saying, I think when you get YouTube comments that just attack, I think you've been attacked. For I don't know which claim you made, but that got attacked. I got that attacked. That guy should be kept in the. You ODI got attacked team. about Scott. Hey, oh, that was that was earlier. Then I got attacked about Sanju Samson and what I said. And so far, my prediction looks right. And varun has <laughs> been attacked relentlessly by Hyderabad fans. So of course, I'm talking about Hyderabad, who currently sit at the bottom of the table. Again, one game does not a season make, but it's pretty funny. I gotta say, I've been enjoying how much he's enjoying having been right at this point. Yeah, but I mean, we should clarify: we don't hate any teams. We and don't hate when any we say th- being attacked, it's like people no, are giving still, comments, which we everybody's got a view, right? We love yeah, the we- engagement. We love you guys. The thing is, man, there are ten. There are ten teams, at least eight great teams. And four are going to make the playoffs, regardless of what we say. Yeah, the math doesn't check out, and we're going to be wrong. That's and, fine. That's the point of making predictions. Right? And exactly that. And I should say that. Listen, if you want very serious cricket an- analysis with lots of stats, and this is probably the wrong place for you. We have we come with biases, prejudices. We are your friends sitting in the drawing room talking about cricket, and that's what we do. So. If I think that KKR is going to qualify, I'm going to fight tooth and nail for that. And that's just the fun of it, right? Because we will be horrifically wrong more often than not. But that's the point. But if you do want the Bakwaskar Awards, this is the right show for you guys. So, Absolutely. Yeah, keep the comments coming. And honestly, they're good, good fun. <clears throat> Jokes apart, they, it's all good fun. And it a lot of them are super insightful. So we do like reading them. Yeah, could not agree more. Right, DJ. It is the end of the opening weekend of the IPL. We are going to spend the rest of this episode double-clicking into what happened. It's amazing. Five matches, right? Friday, two double-headers. All 10 teams have played. We got our first look at all 10 teams. We got our first look at impact players. And it was very interesting to see some used it well. Some did not use it well at all, including our very own team that you and I both predicted for Final Four. It's the Delhi Capital, who felt like, felt like they completely wasted the impact player. But... Let's jump in. The way we're going to do this, we're going to try to do this for the rest of the IPL season. We'll just do a quick overview of what happened in the game and kind of just just talking points. Does that work? All right. Yeah, it works for me, man. Okay. So uh, the first two matches were were very close, I'd say. And then we had three kind of one-sided games. Let's be honest. That's how that worked. But kicking us off was Hardik Pandya versus MS Dhoni. First off, we say this every year. But even at the Narendra, at every ground across the country, but even at the Narendra Modi Stadium in Gujarat, in Ahmedabad, the screams for Dhoni when he came out before the toss were, I mean, you must, that must have, must have given you a little bit of goosebumps, right? Yeah, man. I mean, it's, uh, we don't get to see him for the rest of the year. Uh, for MS Dhoni fans like me, it is, we look forward to the IPL, of course, but we also look forward to seeing our legends and heroes and, I'd say almost the greatest IPL cricketer ever, the greatest legend, um, four-time champion from there, there from the inception of of the IPL. Um, man, it was it was a goosebumpy moment, and there was another one later in the weekend when Rishabh Pant's jersey was on top of the Delhi Capitals dugout. That that got me a little bit choked up, I have to say. But this was this was pretty special to watch Tala walk out there. So it was so, so one was the toss, and of course, uh, we'll talk about the game, right? A couple of highlights, but before I do, in the I think it was the last over of the innings, he hit one of those one of those sixes over the leg side. Which, if you want, if you're not watching, you won't see it. But if you're watching us, you'll see DJ's face right now. That is just pure 
joy at the thought of Dhoni's sick. Like, it was great. A great moment, right? It was a six followed by a four as well. And like, and then he swung and he missed one. And that's the thing. Like, the, Dhoni just did this for fun back in the day, right? Like, in, in his prime, he he just used to pull these out. And it was a great shot. It, it went miles. Yeah, it was... Uh, it, it rolled back the years for uh, those of us who love MS. What? I'm going to stop talking about MS soon, I promise. But what's going you on can't. with his knee? You can't. What's going on with the knee? I know he's had treatments for it before, and then he kind of landed mm-hmm. on it funny at one point. He didn't look 100%. Any any concerns or fears? I mean, he's, what, 41? 42 <laughs> yep. years old. Mm-hmm. There will be niggles, right? And he it is hard to get not played the rest of the year and then suddenly get fit for for a two month long tournament um but he's kept himself in pretty good shape even despite that i think he'll be okay he's a, he's a tough guy and wicked keepers are tough characters and ms is the toughest of the lot he'll be, he'll be fine he, he has a point to prove they finished ninth last year after winning the year before and finishing 10th the year before that so they've had a bit of a yo-yo um, uh, ride on, in the ipl so i think he'll he'll stick it out as much as he can yeah, interesting. An interesting uh, choice of words to call it a yo-yo test with uh, Ambati Raidu as one of the, the players in the Chennai squad. We the know first his ever impact player substitute? Was Ambati off? Yeah, so let's talk about the game really quick, right? Chennai yeah. Super Kings made 178. No runs from Devin Conway. Not a lot to speak of from uh, Ben Stokes either. Raidu came in. Shivam Dube came in. Jadeja didn't do so well. The only finished off well, but really this was a one man show. And of course I'm talking about Ruth Raj Gaikwad. He just, he seems like an IPL beast. I mean, 92 off 50, the only, the only thing that would, that fell short, unfortunately, is that he should have probably made a century there. Like he just, it's, he just played unbelievable. The ball striking was great. I mean, nine sixes, only four fours, but nine sixes. Uh, took, took a lot of the bowlers to the cleaners. And in response, Pretty measured chase from the Gujarat Titans. I mean, it's not. It was not a obviously early stages of the tournament. You do back yourself to chase versus back first. Um, Saha looked okay. Interesting choice with, to open with Saha. Size to Darshan at three. So you're looking at the the Gujarat Titans side and saying, you know, they made some interesting selection choices. But then Vidish. No, but that was at, because of Kane Williamson's injury. That yeah, side so, came so, in. Correct. So we'll talk that in a sec. Um, Vijay Shankar came in at five and then Tevatiya played kind of a tr- standard Tevatiya knock, lots and lots and lots of dot balls. But then when it mattered, he, he pulled it out and with Rashid Khan, they finished it off. So that's how, let me ask you about Ruturaj first. Anything, anything to say? I mean, from a Gujarat bowling standpoint, Rashid picked up to Joseph picked up to but Gaikard, Gaikard is just one for the future, right? Yeah, I mean, he batted beautifully, 92 of 50. Uh, unlucky, almost in the old days where he couldn't, um, that, that would have probably been called a no-ball, I yeah. felt, yeah. in the old days. Yeah. Uh, where you couldn't DRS those no-balls. And he did review it, and it showed that it was dipping below waist height. So, unlucky to miss out on a ton, but man, he patted on a different track. His driving over cover and extra cover and straight down the ground was something sense. else, actually. He was just standing and putting his hands through the ball. It was beautiful to watch, I have to say. Um one for the future. He's been an IPL yeah, orange cap winner already good. once. Yeah. So um, Varun wants him to open for uh, India uh, soon. So um, yeah, he's he's surely done his uh, his stats. He's now the orange cap holder as well at the moment with ninety two runs. So yeah. yeah, he's done his stats a world of good with that. And so only sort of outdone by the other one for the Indian opening future, and that's of course Shubman Gill. I mean, he just this guy has. Just, just had the season of his life, just picked up where he left off, playing test cricket, playing ODI cricket, playing T20 for India, which some of us questioned, and then just guided the side home. I mean, 63 of 36 balls, struck at 175, higher than anybody else in his team who played more than three balls. I mean, just just phenomenal. I mean, this was the Shubman Gill show. Yeah, superb. Just so relaxed, just so classy. Just it always just, the, the commentator's cliche is that the best players always look like they have extra time with the ball, right? But with Shubman, it just... I don't have a better way to articulate it. It just looks so, so good to watch. Yeah, it's silky, right? I think that's what that's the word that comes to mind. It's like silk and touch. Beautiful. Great knock. Great yeah. Tasty. So let's talk about a couple other things then. Two, two, three big injuries already so far. We saw earlier today at the time of recording, Reese Topley looks like he's dislocated his shoulder. So all the best to him. He was in kind of for Josh Hazelwood, who um, the, the Bangalore team is missing out on, and Rajat Patidar also didn't play. But Kane Williamson. 
I mean, an important addition to the Gujarat side. Obviously, they ended up winning. Good start to their campaign to defend their trophy, but on the boundary, I mean, a great piece of fielding and then just fell funny. And you could hear, you could hear the commentators. I don't remember who it was, Simon Duell, maybe as a Kiwi, we realized Ken Williamson is a, is a tough guy. Like he doesn't, doesn't stay down unless it's pretty bad. And so as soon as, as soon as he stayed down, you know, it was bad. So sort of a tough decision. I'm unclear if they would have used, um, they brought in Sudarshan, I think, as the impact player for Kane. Unclear if he would have been the right choice for it, but in that case, it was more of an injury substitution. Mm. And then on the flip side, the Chennai team used, uh, took out Amati Raidu, like you said, and brought in Tushar Deshpande. Now he ended up bowling four over, almost four overs, like 3.2, giving one for 51, the most expensive bowler by a long distance. So what's the strategy there, right? I, I was the one on the show, you're an MS fan. I was the one on this show who said, listen, the impact player will need really smart cricketers. And I think Dhoni would use it well, but I sat here saying, I'm sorry, you had Moin Ali in the side, um, and you had, I guess I'm trying to look at who else didn't bowl. Yeah. Basically just Moin cause Stokes is not, uh, in, the, in there. Oh, and Shivam Dubey. That's what I was thinking of. Sorry. I forgot. Yeah. Both guys can bowl and you forced four overs from Tushar Deshpande and he went. Mm. Uh, so was that the strategy all along? You think to only play four bowlers and bring in a fifth and only use the five bowlers, not try any of your all rounders. Well, it's odd that Moin didn't bowl cause Moin is, is a good bowler and he's, he's bowled. Uh, previously for CSK and he's opened the bowling and he's taken wickets even in the power play. Um, I mean, Tushar Deshpande became the first ever impact sub to come on uh, for Raidu. Of course, I wonder what Raidu thinks about that because uh, the whole 3D uh, chatter happened and Vijay Shankar was of course in the Gujarat Titans the, team. There's too, there's too many inside <laughs> references in this episode. <laughs> in, the, in, the, uh, on, in the other camp. Um, but he got subbed out for a pure bowler and I think um, maybe Dhoni, there was something to do with matchups, right? Mm-hmm. And it may have been a, a matchups thing. Tushar Deshpande obviously didn't do well, right? Like he's an ex Delhi Capitals player as well. Um, if I remember 2020, used to be in our side. Um, I'm okay with that, to be honest. That use of the impact, I think it was bad use of your, your resources. Yeah. But I think the use of the impact player itself wasn't, wasn't wrong because you subbed out a pure batter. And he brought in a pure bowler at the right time. Where I have an issue is we'll come to the Delhi Capitals game because that I found yeah, that a very weird way of using it. Um, but the, he should have probably thrown the ball to Moin. I mean, everybody else was going for runs, so I'm pretty sure Moin wouldn't have gone for more than 13 and over, right? So, yeah, well said. I mean, plus he was in my fantasy team, so yeah. Not a great, it's not been a great start for me in fantasy, but we'll hit that at the end really quick. I mean, overall, it was, it was a good first match. Went down to the last over. Good finish by uh, Rashid Khan and Tevatia, like I said. Pretty pretty well expected. The usual suspects showed up. I think we expect to see Jadeja do a little bit more. And uh, shout out to Rajvardhan Angargekar, who ended up picking three wickets, uh, under-19 player for India before, obviously in that uh, championship winning side. So nice to see him in the mm-hmm. IPL set up and picking up uh, a three-far. Right. Yeah. Saturday morning, or Saturday morning for me, Saturday afternoon, the first match uh, of the doubleheader was Punjab versus KKR. I need, to get my, I need to get a charger because of my computer. Screen. That's great. Please, so I'm going to keep talking and run down this match while DJ does that. This is highest quality podcasting, uh, as you've come to expect from us. King, the Punjab Kings versus KKR. So an interesting second match ended up being, ended up coming down to the Duckworth Lures. So... Punjab Kings ended up batting first and uh, KKR, I think, also won the toss and chose to chose to field. Yep, all teams so far have won the toss, chose to field. So Punjab bats first. Interesting choices. I, uh, uh, you know, as DJ comes back, I'll ask him, but a couple of really interesting batting performances, right? You saw everybody in the top five get to double digits. I'm running down the Punjab innings, DJ, well said. But you saw everybody in the top five, top six, top seven actually get to double digits. But uh, Shikhar Dhawan kind of played the role we've come to expect from him as the skipper, anchored, made 40 runs. The highlights were really Prabhsimran Singh, who just hit magnificently before he got dismissed uh, by to Saudi, and Bhanuka Rajapaksa. I mean, 50 lakhs, base price, basically, and batting at three made a magnificent 50. Uh, Sam Curran came in and gave it to some tonks at the end, made it to 191 for, for five. Thoughts on Rajapaksa and Prabhsimran Prabh Singh as you get your catch your breath back? 
Yeah, it was a it was a great knock. I, I liked Prabh Simran. I think we've seen him previously as well, um, uh, batting up the order. I think he's a keeper as well, right? If I'm not wrong. Uh, sure. Yeah. <laughs> yes, he is a wicket keeper batsman. Yeah, That's so right. he, yeah. He, he, I think we've seen him before. He's a, he's a good bat man. He took off like an absolute rocket, and Shekhar, who you've tipped for the orange cap, which is tuk tuking happily. He no man, he the, hit six balls. Listen, when you got an opener, you, you'll see from the other matches of the weekend, it, that role can matter early in an IPL. You've got Prabh Simran smacking, you've got Rajapaksa smacking, you've got uh, Sam Karan Shahrukh Khan to follow. Dhawan is playing exactly the role his team makes. Yeah. Strike rate is anyway overrated and over Punjab after all. Right. So, it's <laughs> yeah, it was, it was, a, it was a, um, an interesting uh, approach by Shekhar and... Then Rajapaksha, he's done this last year as well. He comes in in three and just tees off from ball one. He hit a great six. Um, I can't remember who it was. It off uh, Kuldeep or Narayan? It was. It was Kuldeep a is a Delhi player. Oh, Delhi is a yeah. That's right. I think it may have been off Narayan that that he just extended his arms and it was just yeah. a great great shot. Uh, but yeah, fantastic. They just kept uh, kept their foot on the on the gas, man, and. As we'll talk about later, it mattered in the end. It was, yeah, it was a and, great. and well bowled to my uh, KKR X Factor, uh, Sharzul, who was the second most expensive bowler. So he did not do the, have the worst bowling performance. So, so really well played before I get more hate in the comments from you guys. Um, but 191 and an interesting start to the chase. Mandeep Singh has just not had a good run in the IPL after he started his IPL career pretty well. Just not really delivered. Anukul Roy at three didn't deliver. Rinku Singh got out quickly. And yeah, you know, decent knocks in places. I mean, Gurbaz looked like he was going to be good. Nitish Rana played that Shikhar Dhawan anchor type role. Russell hit a few big shots. Great, great bowling performance from Arshdeep Singh. Three for 19 in his three overs. So, and, and you know, it ended up coming down to rain, which was a little bit of a, a good excuse yeah. for uh, the KKR team. I want to ask you really quickly. So Punjab sw- subbed out Rajapaksa after his batting innings for Rishi Dhawan, who ended up pulling just the one over. Uh, for 15 or something. For right? 15. Yeah. Uh, and then, but more interestingly, we were all a little shocked that Venkatesh Ayer, who, remember, was retained over Shubhan Gill by the KK. Like, just, it seems crazy now. But uh, what did not start, did not bowl, um, but came into bat and actually ended up batting pretty well. He came in, I think, batted at four. Uh, made 34 of 28, was looking decent for a point. So, so if I'm to rate, I think so far, that's probably the best use of the impact sum. Got a full bowling quota uh, out of Chakravarti, who's not known for his ability mm. to bat, and brought in Venkatesh at four to bat. But thoughts yeah. on that? Yeah, you could have had Jagdishan come in as well. That was the other mm-hmm. option for, for KKR. Yeah, uh, I mean, I actually had Venki Ayer in my fantasy cricket team. Then I went Same. out and... And then and, I got stressed that he wasn't playing. Yeah, and then I was like, oh my God, is, is he... Because it, it shows up as red when you when he's not in the team, right? And then suddenly he was in and we were both like... Mm-hmm. Yeah. But uh, you wouldn't have expected him not to play. Maybe if he'd batted first, he would have been playing. Yeah. Um, and they lost two early wickets and he stabilized, right? Along with um, uh, the other KKR players. Honestly, losing those two wickets just before the rain, I think it was two overs before the rain. Yeah, that they just look changes. back at if, that. If you look, if you know how the Duckworth Lewis math works, it your target gets exponentially higher for every wicket you lose because it factors yeah. in wickets remaining. And so they just that was it. Getting yeah. out when he did probably cost them the game. Yeah, and and it was him and Russell both. Yeah, because uh, Karan uh, took a wicket um, and Arshdeep took a wicket and. In the final anal- analysis, this is what it's going to come down to. And <laughs> it's these kind of fine margins that will matter as you go down these 10 weeks that you'll remember, yeah. oh man, they lost by seven runs. But <laughs> if they had lost one less wicket, maybe they would have been two runs or three runs ahead. And that's another two points to add on to your uh, your tally. So uh, unlucky. Um, there's some good Russell heroics. That was, that was pretty... Nice it was to fun see, to see. Actually. It was nice to see. It just, yeah. That's what I mean, right? So the usual suspects kind of showed up this weekend. So yeah. it was pretty But cool. Arshdeep was fantastic. I think three wickets, right? Just great. Just great. Super. Wickets, just really good. Right, DJ, we're going to take a really quick break. We're running a little behind schedule, but when we come back, we'll talk about the next game of the Saturday doubleheader and the two games of the Sunday doubleheader of the IPL opening weekend. So don't go anywhere. We'll be right back. <clears throat> Welcome back to the Edges and Sledges Cricket Podcast. 
We are talking about the opening weekend of the IPL, and we're going to go straight into the third match. It is always difficult. Oh, yeah. If you're watching us on YouTube, DJ says like, subscribe. If you're not, if you're listening, check us out on YouTube sometime and like and subscribe. It's always fun. You can leave comments there, too. Uh, we'd always love to hear from you, even when some of you hate what we have to say. Oh, yeah. And- <laughs> I mean, it's true. And rate and review. And, and rate, rate and review. And rate and review. Just hit that five star yeah. button yeah. and then Every, you can say whatever you want in the review. Everyone's an expert. I IPL know. I mean, not, so are we. This is what we do. We, had, we just have fun and we love all you guys. We love <laughs> the engagement from all our listeners. DJ, let's talk about this third game. Third team in a row to win the toss and bowl. Disappointing, obviously, for us as Delhi fans. A couple of things I want to highlight. Lucknow ended up making 193. Dropped a sitter by cut. Uh, by Khalil of Kyle Mayers on 14, who ends up going to make 73 of 38. It was just, just unbelievable. Like the easiest catch. And then this guy makes us, makes us, the Delhi team pay. Nicholas Puran looked good. 193 was, was an excellent, excellent score. And the Delhi team just honestly didn't really show up. And we'll talk a little bit about the uh, impact player. David Warner just like batted like he was playing an ODI or a test more than a, uh, a T20. We had a, Little nice little cameo from Riley Rosso, but really Mark Wood, Pfeiffer just looked outstanding. I mean, I'm almost excited to see Delhi play Hyderabad when you see Mark Wood. Or sorry, Lucknow play Hyderabad when you see Mark Wood against Umran Malik. Like just outstanding pace bowling from Wood. But uh, let's start with Kyle Mears. Shouldn't what, likely wasn't even picked in anybody's starting elevens. Uh, he's in for or probably for this right now, but he's in for Quinton Dakar. Quinton DeCock is the Lucknow first choice opener. And now Kyle Mayers has given them a selection problem, right? Uh, I don't know. I think QDK will probably walk back in. I think it puts uh, Churan, Puran into a I, bit of a... I don't think you're dropping... You're definitely not dropping Mark Wood. Or, no, or, or Puran, because he's also keeping Churan. Cause he's but, keep... but, but QDK can keep. Oh, yeah, of course. Sorry. But I think you're playing him as a lower order batsman. And so, yeah. I, you know, and then the question comes in for Stoinis. Stoinis didn't bowl, right? And if you have an impact player, does Stoinis walk in just yeah. as a batter? But good, I mean, good problem to have, but definitely a yeah. selection problem to drop a guy who made 73 of 38 balls. Yeah. But he started off slow. I think I, I Very he's playing a, a, a really good test match knock. He's mainly known for... Did he play a really good knock in Bangladesh and score like a, a match-winning fourth innings 100? Oh, yeah, he did. Of course he did. Yeah, he, this is the guy, he, right? I mean, his test average is 33. So he's got a pretty quality test uh, mm. test average. So yeah, 30 years old. No, but it, it was good. Uh, KLR obviously did not come off. All our fantasy captain failed. So everybody failed together, which is yeah. fine. Yeah. Uh, little head strike rate was 66. <laughs> <laughs> so it doesn't matter. Who cares? Strike rate. But he's going to score 100 in the next match. So please captain him, everyone. Yeah, sure. 100%. He always yeah. does it in the second match or third match. Um, no, but um, yeah, it was... It was tough. Poor f- Delhi were poor in the field. And I, I rem- we started off really well as Delhi Capitals fans. We were bowling really well. But the first six runs, four of those were unnecessary runs given by misfields. Mm-hmm. And then you drop that catch and then it just goes from there. Right? Mm-hmm. You try and strike back, but it doesn't quite happen. And then 22 runs off the last over. You can't have a, a team that's got Sakarya as well as Khalil. Yeah. It's only one of the two that can play. And that'll be yeah. fixed by, yeah. as, as the South Africans come back. Like, no okay, comes, yeah. So that, there'll be stuff that gets done. But um, yeah, it was 191, I thought, was a lot of runs to get yeah. on that track. It was. It seemed like a lot. But if you wanted a lineup to get those runs, I think I think someone like uh, Harsha Bogle tweeted that, right? That uh, you want, if you wanted to put together a lineup to chase 190 odd, it probably looked like something like Shaw, yeah. Warner, yeah. Um, Riley Russo, Rovman Powell. Yeah. Um, I can't Sarfraz. remember who was. Sarf- yeah. Yeah, Sarf- oh, what a weird way to get out. Anyway. Yeah. Let, so let me ask you about the impact player because we're talking about it. We're, oh. We probably won't talk about it too much. Um, yeah, we probably won't talk about it too much going ongoing. Both impact players came in within five balls of each other. Okay, so the end of the 19th over, Lucknow's 171 for five. Khalil has finished his four overs, and Aman Khan comes on the field at that point. Now, interesting, right? Because he's, a, he's an all-rounder who's predominantly a bowler but can hit big. So why why make that choice for that last over unless there was something specific? Like, go back, take your innings break, think about it, make the decision, maybe even watch the top order. And if you have a top order collapse, kind of which sort of ended up happening, then you have a, uh, um, 
only possible thing i can think of is that they were so worried about khalil fielding for one extra over that he may drop After a catch drop. or something interesting interesting i don't okay. know it's a weird thing to do because why would you hmm. say that we will play this guy why would you use up your batting option before yeah. your batting is started yeah you need no. to be more reactive to to if you're 15 for 3 which is of just using that as an example for our favorite yeah. uh, scoreline right yeah. you don't want to have an azam um sorry who was the, what was aman khan name? yeah aman khan um, i'm thinking of like uh, babar babar azam or uh, azam because khan because you saw sikandar azam in the sikandar azam in the last game <laughs> no 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 so so you, you don't you don't you, you'd want to probably plug mm-hmm. that gap with a proper batter instead of a hitter this guy's mm-hmm. got a i think he's got a strike rate of 166 in domestic t20 yeah. cricket right so he's a hitter he, so and, yeah i think that's it if we were 125 for four with 70 runs needed of 35 balls he's the guy you want in yeah. but when we're 40 for 3 you want a manish pandey or somebody to come in and help you anchor and yeah. it was just for that i think your fielding inst- insight might be correct which is yeah. also horrifying for six balls kalil yeah, is so bad at it it's so poor why, why i think i mean for someone like ponting to be so tactically yeah. poor you just yeah. like I mean, there was a something. lot of theories about Ponting as captain, by the way, saying he was mm-hmm. just given a team that was yeah. an, full of all-time greats. He barely had to captain them. Yeah. So I don't know. It, it was interesting. Was weird. I mean, if we're missing something on the potential why, let us know. We'd love to hear tweets or comments on YouTube because I'm I'm really curious. It makes no sense to me that you wouldn't have been able to power through with Khalil for the six balls and make your decision on which extra batter based on the the innings. Right, unless of course they were going to give the ball to Aman, which they didn't yeah. either, and which so you like, could, yeah, you could bring like a Malinga in in the last two overs or some, I don't yeah. know, I don't know, or a Russell in. Russell was the example, right? Yeah, Maybe. yeah, right. So, so Gujarat chose to chase and won. Then KKR chose to chase and lost. Delhi chose to chase and lost. And then Rajasthan played Hyderabad, and of course this is the game <laughs> Varun should be here for. Um, Hyderabad chose to chase. came up short by a big big margin of course and are now bottom of the table because of net run rate but let's talk about the Rajasthan Royals uh, top order i mean just just looks outstanding jaiswal butler samson i mean almost you almost think padikal and riyan parag at 4 5 are a little weird because of that explosive top 3 i mean it's a yeah it's probably a good top 3 for 15 good, good for number 4 for 15 for 3 but not as good for this match situation uh, where they ended up being 151 for 3 but Yeah, talk to, like Jaiswal makes a 50 of 37 balls. Samson makes a 50 of 32, 55 of 32 balls. And Butler's like, I want to do you guys better. He makes a 54 in just 22 balls. I mean, he, he just outstanding. This top three looks unstoppable, right? Yeah, that, it, it actually started off with Jaiswal being the aggressor. Yeah. Which is, which is funny because, yeah. like you think of Josh Butler, and then there was a spell where Butler just hit everything for four and six. And it was clean, clean. clean very good very very fast hands yeah. um lots of drives through the off offside a uh, few flick shots for six it was weird to me that him bring umran malik in within the mm-hmm. power play it seemed odd to me that they wouldn't do that um and they persisted with i think it's farooqi mm-hmm. and uh, natu and they just kept going for runs and like you've got a weapon like Uh, Umran Malik in which is pure pace right yeah. why would you not if you if you're going at they were going at 15 runs and over at one yeah. point in the power yeah. play right and i was just like wow um, yeah couldn't agree more so it was a magnificent knock by by butler and yeah sanju backed that up and and yashasvi as well so great couple great. nice hits from hetmyer in the end to get them to over that 200 mark which mm-hmm. we know is always a psychological uh disadvantage i mean everybody except natrajan natrajan picked up 24 and was economical everybody else went for for over 10 runs and over like it was mm-hmm. just 
shoddy kind of bowling performance unfortunately and and they also fell a little bit short i think of where they could have ended up they were 85 for mm-hmm. one i think by the end of the power play they were 85 for or, one or something like that, yeah. and i mean butler yeah. got out in in the 6th yeah. over right they made a yeah. crazy fast 50 and then just got out yeah and, and so that's what ha- i mean haven't got that many runs in the, in the well that's last. what i mean i think they made 33 runs in the last four overs or something thanks to a couple hits from hetmeyer but not enough and mm. uh that's where you think is particle for ian prad 5 oh and particle got seven good enough beaten by pace properly and we should talk a little bit about particle Umran. beaten by pace and mark wood beating Prithvi Shaw quite badly for yeah, pace. Yeah. And I mean, Mark again, Hood beat, beating all Mitchell Marsh. For pace, for pace. All, yeah. I, I was trying to skip over the Delhi shortcoming because I didn't have the heart to talk about it. Full credit to Mark for the five. Yeah. But yeah, I mean, that Umran ball, Malik Paul, if you haven't seen it, just watch it. You know what happened there? He got the wicket. He started almost celebrating and then kind of checked himself and stopped. If you haven't seen that clip, I would watch it. It's all over the, all over the socials. And I couldn't tell whether it's he stopped because, you know, there are bowlers who... Have injured themselves while celebrating, you know, from from across the border sometimes. Hassan Ali, <laughs> yeah, like he, and and Oman has a pretty big celebration. So I don't know if he got feedback saying, "Listen, don't celebrate too big because you could hurt yourself in the celebration." Or there's something about the, they have that particle relationship, friendship, or something. He got uh, mm. he got him bold, like an outstanding delivery, and then started celebrating and just stopped and just kind of like smiled and like I don't know what that was, but it was interesting. Mm, yeah, I, I, you're right. Actually, I didn't pick that up, but that was yeah. that was good. Yeah. So respect. Two hundred and three, Hyderabad apparently, apparently one of the best teams suited to win the tournament. <laughs> I'm just rubbing this in. I'm you're going to you're going to join the public apology bandwagon. Yeah. I'm staying out of this. Okay, we saw Arshdeep the lefty bowl well. We saw decent success early for the two lefties from Delhi, and then of course this lefty from New Zealand who's done this a million times. Trent Bolt comes in, zero for one. Zero for two in the first. And time. a horrible review. Did you see that Tripathi? Yeah, he's middled it off the middle of his bat to first slip. It hold up, takes a peach of a catch. Yeah, great catch. Tripathi reviews it. Yeah. I couldn't believe that that was reviewed. Yeah, unbelievable. Yeah. Um, and then like my uncle looked okay, but again, bat, run a ball type of innings. Harry Brook looked extremely scratchy. And I called him as my X Factor, and I hope he shows up. Um, I don't know whether it's for like if he's played in India before, uh, mm. or yeah. So first time in India, first time in IPL, the the price tag, all that could have weighed in. T-shirt pretty, must be too tight. Pretty good use of the the impact player to bring in Abdul Samad. Uh, I'm just double checking. I haven't lost DJ here. Maybe I have. Okay, I'm going to keep going. We'll see how it goes. Pretty good use of the impact player with Abdul Samad. Made 32 odd runs. Umran actually hit a couple of nice sixes at the end, but full, full credit to the bowling team. I mean, Trent Bolt with those amazing two wickets backed up by Yusvendra Chahal, who picked up a four for. Uh, I mean, many of us have called Chahal <clears throat> as our purple cap uh, pick. I mean, I had Shami, I think DJ called Chahal as his purple cap pack, purple cap pick. So four for 17. Really, really nice. Uh, really, really nice spell from him. So Hyderabad fell a little short. All right, let's see if we can get DJ back here as I'm going to try to talk about that fifth and final match of the opening weekend, which was the second match of the doubleheader. Uh, the last two teams to play, the former Indian captain against the current Indian captain, uh, who's obviously not captaining, former captain's not captaining his side, but you know who I'm talking about. It's the Rohit versus Kohli show. Yet again, team chose to um, win the toss, chose to bowl, always wanting to back their chances to chase. Mumbai Indians started their innings. DJ, do I have you back now? I want to keep this going. Let's hope uh, we can finish. So I was just about to kick off the Bangalore-Bombay match. Uh, Rohit versus Kohli. What happened to Rohit Sharma? I was watching. I captained him in my fantasy team. I've called him out as the X Factor. So again, I hope I hope I'm wrong here. Or I hope I proved to be right. I hope this was a weird one-off. But one of 10 balls, including a drop catch that could have been catastrophic as DK and Siraj ran into each other. Fortunately, none of them was too badly injured. But, which is, I mean, absolutely horrendous, right? Like, I look at the whole Mumbai side and 84 from Tilak Barma, who just seems to have a knack for IPL. It was so great to watch him bat and coach the youngsters. And But 84, I mean, 171 runs at the Chinnaswamy with this kind of a batting lineup. Green single digits, Tim David single digits, Rithik Shakin single digits. Sky didn't look good for his run of ball 15. Yeah, talk to me especially about Rohit. What happened? Yeah, it was never going to be enough, right? I, I don't know. I mean, it's um, 
he looked slightly out of sorts he looked like he didn't quite know where he was going to get his runs to be honest yeah and his pull shot didn't come off and that's surprising because he's a magnificent yeah. player of that pull shot and he yeah. was beaten for pace by someone like sirat so there was a little bit in the in the in the pitch i think for uh, the bowlers um but yeah i mean yeah one of 10 it's just, unusual maybe yeah. just rusty maybe let's just hope rusty so. let's hope that's what yeah. it is couple he's going jofra in the net so yeah couple of wickets to the multiple multiple time ipl champion karan sharma it's amazing to see him still out there how i, I have no idea i haven't looked but let's guess how old do you think karan sharma is I don't know. This is a controversial topic because at Piyush Chavla photos during during the rounds with Piyush, him Piyush and Chavla younger than and Virat. Kohli, yeah, him and Kohli side by side, and Piyush is younger than Virat. It's, it's slightly controversial, but Karan Sharma was thinking, man, he's been around a long time. It was 2014 that he played that Test match in Adelaide where Virat first he's, captained. Yeah, yeah. A, a Test. He scored those two hundreds, and Karan Sharma actually played that Test yeah. match as our leg spinner. Yeah. So today I was watching this and I was going, "Oh my god, this guy's been around for a really really long time now." Mm-hmm. Uh but he bowled well. He uh, made a good comeback. He's been a passenger on a number of trophy rides. Um RCB will be hoping that he's uh, an active participant in this one for them, right? And what a start by RCB, man. Yeah, good intent. Just an outstanding, good intent. And then he started I mean fast to play. He seems like he's aging in reverse and just seems like he gets better and better and I mean Seventy-three of forty-three for Fab, not to be outdone. Eighty-two of forty-nine for Virat, undefeated in a chase. I mean, how great was that to watch our boy? Five sixes, six four. It was just, it was magnificent. I mean, almost a little disappointing they didn't take it home and finish it by ten wickets, but they basically they all but did right. The Nets got out quickly, but just magnificent, right? Yeah, and uh, yeah, Mumbai's woes continue, man. Tilak Verma was great. Um, uh, nice shots from Nehal Wadera. I like those. Yeah. The two sixes went for the third, so clearly he isn't holding back. Um, but Ishan Kishan failed as well. So mm-hmm. problems, problems for Mumbai man. Mumbai eight wicket loss. To start strong, so I'm sure they'll be looking at it and saying, "Hey, we we we're used to starting weak and then finishing stronger." But obviously, eight wicket loss. Not enough runs on the board. Nobody really they, showed up with the ball. They, I mean, they got ten on ten last round. So yeah, yeah, ten on ten. Time. Yeah, ten is good, right? Higher numbers are better. <laughs> I mean, I think the only last thing I'll say is there seems to be a, a, you know, you look at two sides who are missing their South African player, and you look at Gujarat with David Miller and Lucknow with Quinton de Kock, and both didn't seem to miss him, right? As Gujarat showed up and uh, Kyle Mayer stepped in for Quinton de Kock. And then you look at Hyderabad missing their skipper. Uh, you know, I, I, I joke. I'm being tongue in cheek for anybody who's listening. I'm obviously joking about Hyderabad. It's just funny to see five teams were going to win this weekend. Five were going to lose. It's just how the IPL goes. I think Hyderabad is still an outstanding team on paper. And when Adrian Aiden Markham shows up, who just made 175, by the way, against the Netherlands team in an ODI, uh, he'll show up. He'll add leadership and he'll add batting. Uh, and then for a team like. The Delhi Capitals, Andrik Nokia, will show up and add uh, leadership with the ball and add some firepower. I think it's going to be a very interesting change once the, the South Africans show up, right? Yeah, it's interesting how the South Africans have become such a big part of this. It used to be the West Indians that mm-hmm. used to dominate mm-hmm. for for many many years, but uh, yeah, you're seeing the first hints of of a shift of power. Then maybe it has to do with more of the domestic structures falling away. I don't and know. The C- and the SAT twenty being owned by yeah. IPL franchise owners yeah. and stuff. All that probably weighs in. So. Yeah, no, but it'll be it'll be super interesting when the when I think it's going to be this week, right? Because they finish their mm-hmm. their games. Uh, Back home. I think they're done. Yeah, so they should be coming right anytime soon. Yeah. Right, DJ. It's very early, but the Edges and Sledges Fan League is running. We have 85 of you playing. There's still plenty of time to join. We'll try to post the link in the show notes here, uh, or follow us on Twitter or Discord. We had a couple uh, early leaders, but this tends to happen. We have a team called uh, Wicket Sensation, who's in the lead by a massive amount, uh, but have already used 18 subs, which is quite a lot at this point. We have. Mm. Two ka ten or two ka dust, depending on how you want to read it. In second place, uh, is that Bhavish? To... Sure, I, I think it's Bhavish. I can't tell who that is. Uh, and then they don't show you the owner's name; they just show you the team name. So people who okay. come up with names. And third place is Master Eleven, also pretty close. Used less subs. I'm kind of 
wallowing down in number 36 out of 85, middle of the table, good mid table mm. side. DJ, you're in number 22. You're a little bit ahead of me. And I don't know where Varun is. I think he's a little bit ahead of, uh, ahead of you. So Varun's gone ahead. Is he not? Maybe he's not. I, oh no, he's a little bit behind you. I'm sorry. He's down all the way down in, uh, 11. He struggled. No, looking at a different league, struggling here. Varun is behind me. That's why I couldn't find him. That's what I'm saying. There we go. He's behind he's me. He's saving his subs. Yeah, that's it. End. That's it. He's, he's holding on. But yeah, DJ, overall final assessment, we went a little over what we wanted to run, but final assessment on opening weekend in IPL, kind of a little uh, bit of what we expected, a little bit of fun newness with the impact player. We had a DLS yeah, d- match. D- uh, yeah, what thoughts? Yeah, a few things. I would have liked to see more close games. Um, I wasn't terribly happy by the one-sided nature of some of those games. I mean, the Delhi game wasn't I think wasn't it's great. fair to say we had two close games to start and then three very one-sided ones. So we're kind of... Yeah, yeah. yeah possibly. Possibly. But I, I want to see a, a close IPL. A 10-team IPL should be close. It shouldn't yeah. be like one team thrashing another team. There's no fun in that. And um, you don't want the top half of the table to break away too quickly from the bottom half because yeah. then it becomes... You want those... So you want like maybe one or two teams breaking away and lots of teams in the middle fighting till the last game to get into that playoff. So. Agreed. But yeah, please, please for a lot of the players that have done well. Uh, but it's a long way to go, man. It's 74 games, this IPL. So yeah, long, long way to go. For, and a lo- lot of time for us to be wrong. So oh, keep, we will keep be, writing in. We will be <laughs> right about a few things. We'll be wrong about most things, but we enjoy putting this out every week. We're at one tip, one hand on all the socials. If you want to get in touch with us, YouTube, we check out all the comments as you've seen. You have to send in your messages. We'd love to, like I said, join join our fantasy league. It's great to play with you, uh, and we like to we just like to have a little bit of fun. So this has been the Edges and Sledges Cricket Podcast. As you could, if you can't tell from our voices, this is our favorite time of the year. The IPL is back, alive and kicking. We'll be back next week and probably have another call it nine or ten matches to run through. So we'll try to do it quickly and efficiently. Until then, this has been the Edges and Sledges Cricket Podcast. We will see you next week.